Hey guys, welcome back to Shelby on Safari. I hope you're well and a bit drier than I am at the moment. I've just come out to film our Happy Thanksgiving episode and it's pouring down. So I'm gonna run inside and get nice and dry and you get a cup of tea, cozy on up for story time once again. And this time we're gonna be focusing on how the turkey almost became America's national bird. What? What better way to celebrate Thanksgiving than that, guys? But first, before we do, if you're new here and you want to learn all about animals in the wild or in pop culture, be sure to hit that subscribe button and make that bell go ding so you can be the first to see all the new content. Now, let's head on in and get warm. So now, safely back at home where it's nice and dry in my conservatory with my cup of tea. Let's meet the cast of characters. First up, let's discuss the bald eagle. With a wingspan of up to 8 feet and weighing up to 14 pounds, the bald eagle is a force to be reckoned with. They are very much opportunistic hunters. Sometimes they can be a predator, and other times a scavenger. It just depends on the situation. However, most of the time, you'll find them watching from a high perch, in a tree like this one, waiting to swoop down to catch prey in their big talons. They've also been seen to cruise very low over the sea or land and take prey by surprise, especially where fish are abundant. As opportunistic hunters, their diet is very varied. They mostly eat fish, however, they sometimes can eat carrion, turtles, even other birds. Like the Sandhill Crane, a study in 2017 saw this behavior, and to me, that's just a bit crazy. Although sometimes called the American Bald Eagle, they're not just limited to the United States. In fact, their range extends from parts of Canada all the way down into parts of Mexico. It's believed that bald eagles mate for life. A breeding pair will construct an enormous stick nest. In fact, it's one of the largest in the world of birds. Speaking of nesting, should the breeding pair be successful? Their little babies won't look like their parents for quite some time. That's because young bald eagles aren't quite bald. In fact, they're dark in coloration. They won't get those white markings until they are about five years old. Even though the bald eagle is seen everywhere in imagery and icons of America, in recent memory, they were almost wiped out. For many decades, bald eagles were hunted for sport and to supposedly protect fishing grounds. As we've seen, they certainly like to eat fish. However, this didn't end up too well when pesticides became part of the equation and, well, wrecked havoc on eagles and other birds. Pesticides were collected in fish, which, coincidentally enough, made up most of the eagle's diet. These pesticides then weakened the bird's eggshells and severely limited their ability to reproduce. As we've seen, the bald eagle's quite heavy and when they went to sit and incubate their eggs, they would smush them. Luckily, dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane, or DDT for short, was heavily restricted in 1972, thus allowing eagle numbers to rebound significantly thanks to the help of reintroduction programs. And now, time to meet the wild turkey. While the wild turkey may have a smaller wingspan of going up to only 4.8 feet in length, they weigh a bit more than the bald eagle. In fact, one turkey went up to 18.8 pounds. Turkeys are sexually dimorphic. Only the males will have the ruffled feathers, fan-like tail, bare head, and the bright beard that's associated with these birds. Females like this one, well, they're a bit more on the plain Jane side. 
But what about the turkey's distinctive gobble gobble noise? Well, only the males can make that too. In fact, it can be heard up to a mile away. Now, I don't know about you, but I never associated the turkey with speed. However, these guys actually can be quite quick. In short burst, wild turkeys can run 25 miles an hour. What about when it comes to flying? Well, wild turkeys can reach speeds of 55 miles per hour. The wild turkey's native range extends from southern Canada down into northern Mexico, thus covering most of the United States. However, in the 20th century, the wild turkey was again almost wiped out. This time, it was because of hunting and habitat loss. Luckily, in the 1940s, wild turkey reintroduction programs began, and the birds were relocated to areas where populations had been decimated, but the woodlands that they call home were recovering. As mentioned, wild turkeys tend to like the woodlands because they like to forage on the forest floor. They eat nuts, seeds, fruit, insects, and even salamanders. But wild turkeys can also be found in grasslands and swamps. Now, if you've just eaten your Thanksgiving meal, a word of warning. We're going to talk about feces. Because turkey droppings actually give you some important information. Male droppings are apparently J-shaped, where female droppings are more spiral-shaped. And the larger the diameter of the poo, the older the bird. Who knew? As we see, birds of a feather flock together, especially if you're a turkey. For an adult turkey has 5,000 to 6,000 feathers. Whew, that's a lot of preening to do. Last but certainly not least, the one, the only, Benjamin Franklin. You knew I had to throw a bit of history in here somewhere. He was a man of many talents. Printer, publisher, author, inventor, scientist, and probably most importantly, a diplomat. He was one of the founding fathers and not only helped draft the Declaration of Independence, but was one of its signers. In 1783, he acted as an American ambassador to France, and here Franklin signed the Treaty of Paris, ending the American War of Independence. Later on, he actually helped draft the Constitution as well. So what do these three characters have in common? Well, spoilers, the bald eagle is the national bird of the United States of America. But there's a vicious rumor that the wild turkey was once thought to be a contender in this competition. So I decided to do a bit of deep digging to find out if there was any truth to this statement, because as an American myself, I thought, could the wild turkey really have been the symbol of America? Well, sadly, according to the United States Diplomacy Center, this myth is entirely false. However, Ben Franklin did have some thoughts on this matter, and as a founding father, I think he has a few good points. This rumor may have in fact started because Franklin wrote a letter to his daughter Sarah, in which he does actually question the fact if the bald eagle is a good choice for the national bird. And in true Ben Franklin style, he goes on to describe the morality of each of these species of bird, and well, let's hear from the man himself. No, no, he's not going to read it out loud. I'm going to be reading for Ben Franklin, but you get the idea. So to quote the letter, he says of the bald eagle, For my own part, I wish the bald eagle had not been chosen the representative of our country. He is a bird of bad moral character. He does not get his living honestly. I am on this account not displeased that the figure is not known as a bald eagle, but looks more like a turkey. For the truth, the turkey is in comparison a much more respectable bird, and withal a true, original native of America. 
He is besides, though a little vain and silly, a bird of courage, and would not hesitate to attack a grenader of the British guards who should presume to invade his farmyard with a red coat on. And while the rumor that a turkey may have been our national bird is apparently false, there is still today one thing that does happen every Thanksgiving that's rather amusing when it comes to turkeys, and certainly amusing for one turkey in particular. I'm referring to the presidential pardoning of a turkey. And this was probably one of my favorite episodes of The West Wing when press secretary C.J. Craig had to pretty much decide which turkey would get pardoned. It was quite a stressful ordeal, and if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend you check it out. It was very entertaining. But that definitely is something that happens still to this day. A president will pardon one turkey on Thanksgiving. It, it's an endearing tradition, and one that supposedly started with the good old man himself, Abraham Lincoln, back in 1863. In a dispatch written by White House reporter Noah Brooks in 1865, President Abraham Lincoln gave clemency to a turkey that was brought home to be for dinner. In fact, it was Lincoln's son, Tad, who pleaded for the turkey's life to be saved, and Abe listened to him, and the turkey's life was spared. And with that in mind, it's time to go make some pumpkin pie. So if you learned something new in today's video, why not give it a thumbs up and share it with some of your friends who may find this turkey tale rather entertaining. And let me know in the comments below which bird you would have suggested to the Founding Fathers to be America's national bird. I personally would have gone for the California condor, but then again, I'm completely unbiased. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and happy Thanksgiving. See you next week. Bye.